Hey everyone, welcome to another Angry Artist Podcast. Now, as per tradition, I wanted to answer another question, but first of all, I wanted to mention that I am hoping that I will bring in guests in the future podcast, so it doesn't just sound like me rambling all day. So anyways, off to the question. So, Panther Flint on DeviantArt asks a pretty long question. He says, I have a question. It's been bothering me for some time. I've been getting better at rendering anatomically correct drawings. My color is improving. My lighting is improving. My gesture is improving. And yet my drawings are just a bunch of stuff that everyone else has done before. And they are all in empty ethereal environments. Basically, my drawings lack any real life or story to them. I see a lot of artists, yourself included, thank you very much, that not only make characters that don't feel like they exist merely on a canvas, but also effortlessly add in a believable environment that looks like it's actually being lived in. How do I learn to do this? Now, this question was very hard to think about because there's so many ways we can cut it. I took a brief note of what I saw on his DeviantArt page, and I wanted to talk about one of the biggest traps that a lot of artists fall into. And it's the idea of cartoon foundations. Now, as a precursor, I don't want to say that cartoons and anime or whatever are bad per se. You can do it, but you need to know your fundamentals. And a lot of cases, cartoons and anime, they bring a lot of bad habits into the arsenal. So in the case of uh, your work, Panther Flint, the main thing is you have to really think of the world. Now, I look at your work and I really don't think it's as bad as you seem to make it as in your question. Now, you have to really push your artwork to the next level. And that comes down to creating ideas. It's the one thing that was not mentioned in your question. It's the intangible. It's not technical. You can't really learn it from other teachers. You just have to observe the world and study it. You have to interpret what you like and what you don't like in the world in order to create a believable environment. So in the case of doing things in your style, you seem to have a very cartoonish with a bit of anime influence, I would assume. I don't know if I'm, I'm being too harsh or offensive. Um, that's how I interpret it. So those types of styles tend to make you think in parts. So you think of the character as separate, you think of the environment as separate, and you kind of meld them together, sort of like an animation frame. In illustration, it's different. You have to think of it as a whole. Now, I don't know how much you follow my work, but a lot of cases, I do my best to meld environment and character together in a believable environment. And what I mean by this is everything from the technical side as well as the conception, the concept of the piece has to make sense. So let me teach you how that, what a way to do that would be. Before you do any piece, any original piece rather, you want to write down a paragraph. It could be a short paragraph, it could be a few sentences, or it could be an entire story. I want you to write down every little detail you can think of that you want in your piece. So the world this character is in, what does the character have as a past? Um, 
what do they do, what's their job, how's the government in there, you could go as many details as you like. What this proves and what this helps you with is to think of it as one whole. Text is not separate. It's always going to allude to one story. So when you do art in a certain style, you might think of character, you might render it a lot, and then you completely forget about the environment and then you're like, oh crap, I have to make an environment. But you're not thinking as a whole when you start off with. Now, I'm not sure if that's how your process and train of thought goes when you do work, but I assume that because a lot of people I know had that problem, including myself. When you think of characters, you want to just think of characters, but you're not thinking about the story and what the context of that character is within that world. You're not creating a character, you're not designing an environment, you are creating a world. So this begs the next question. How would you learn to do this? How do you create those worlds? The answer is quite simple. You observe our world and then you interpret it. And you have to do it in such a way that's critical. Do not look from a shallow point of view. You have to really understand what you prefer and what you don't like and really have opinions in your world. Let me assure you that in any artist's portfolio, any professional artist, they're basically stating their opinions of what a world is. Everyone will show their hand when they do artwork honestly. And when you have an interesting point of view, you'll have interesting art. But that comes from understanding and studying the world before you try to create the artwork. Maybe you want to go on vacation to other countries and really check and study movement. Or maybe you want to read history books and really understand um, the past of humanity. There's a ton of different ways of how you can interpret the world. And whatever inspires you will show through your art and it will have details that will be uh, omitted from uh, people who do not understand the world. So let me give you an example of something uh, I watched recently, and it's a documentary of Hayao Miyazaki. In the video, he talks about how Japanese people in the past bowed in a different way, and that people in the modern era kind of lost that gesture. Now, because he was creating The Wind Rises, which is a historical piece in Japan, it means he had to understand the old way of doing movement. Because of his understanding of Japan in the past, he is able to put the bowing motion in. Now, it might seem very negligible. Most people probably wouldn't be able to notice it. They would be like, oh, they're just bowing to each other. But those little details rack up. And when you have a ton of those details where only you or very select few people can understand, you create a world that is specifically to you and not something that's generic and that's unbelievable for a character in the environment. Little storytelling details are a mastery of an artist's interpretation of the world. Of course, Art is a lifetime journey. It's not only about the technique either. You in your question mentioned all of these techniques, which is completely fine. It's great that you're learning all the fundamentals and you're getting better. But to really fulfill and to really complete the artist's training, you have to be able to interpret all the fundamentals together. You can't have your art just demonstrating fundamentals. That would be very student work-ish, if that makes sense. To reach that professional level, you have to have something to say to the world in your own voice. And if you look at even my gallery for years, I've been exploring a ton of styles and a ton of things. 
And the reason why is because I didn't know how to interpret the fundamentals. Um, of course, that's not to say I'm not learning technique anymore. It's just I wanted to prioritize being able to use those fundamentals into a style that's mine. And every artist will eventually face that block. So test yourself. Try different styles that are unfamiliar to you. Maybe you'll find something that you'll like and you'll incorporate it in your next piece. Experimentation is very important because it allows you to open your eyes on how you can interpret the world, which in turn will open possibilities on creating artwork that is believable. I hope that makes sense, but ultimately, again, just study the world, study reality, and the more experience you get, you'll naturally improve yourself in expressing ideas and creating worlds that people can really, truly be immersed in. Just remember that no character lives in isolation. It's always in context of everything. And when you think of art as a whole, everything you do will start to improve because you've changed the way you think. Anyways, thank you for listening and I'll see you next time.